It's my feel good breakfast show. Good morning and welcome to another Wednesday in the Espresso Kitchen. The phone lines are opening and we're taking all your phone calls, all your WhatsApp voice notes, which must mean it's the culinary hotline bling! <laughs> Now, this morning, we're focusing on everything detoxing. What is detox? What is detoxing? How do we detox? All these questions, and we're opening up, like I said, the phone lines, but we also want to get your WhatsApp voice notes. So that magical number that you have to have saved in your phone already is 063-408-8863. And this morning, we want to know if you have any questions about detoxing, any myths that you'd like to be debunked, or any... Any practices that you follow to help you de detox, please send those voice notes through. Now, we brought the expert into the kitchen this morning. Annika, welcome to the kitchen. Thanks, it's good to be here. Very excited to have you in the kitchen this morning because I've got a lot of questions about detoxing. Right. So I think before we kick in with the questions, what are we actually making this morning? So this morning we're making a smoothie. I'm quite excited about it for various reasons. First being, I believe, in not skipping breakfast. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's quite a, a, a modern type of smoothie where all the previous recipes would be laden with heavy carb fruits and stuff like that. So I'm very excited about the extra fiber uh -huh. and the plant-based proteins. I'm seeing one of my favorite ingredients, beans, okay? Yes. Uh, never seen it in a smoothie, so I'm very excited to try that this morning. So I think let's kick off with the smoothie. What, what, where does it all begin? How do we do this? It looks quite simple. Yes, so it, it could be, um, and it really depends uh, the consistency that you'd like. Mm -hmm. um, if you are someone that prefers a smoothie that you can just drink from the glass, or even with the straw, you'd add more of the liquids. Um, smoothie bowls are, however, quite satisfying as well. Right. Because, uh, I mean, some of us, we like to chew and, you know, just spend some time with the food um, that we are having. So what I usually recommend is starting with something like your milk or milk alternative um, and then adding the frozen butter beans. Is this coconut milk? It seems to be coconut milk, yeah. So it It's buttermilk, it's buttermilk, it's buttermilk. <laughs> Sorry, we should sniff before we speak. There we go. It's buttermilk, okay. So buttermilk, and, yeah. I, and I like that we're using buttermilk. Are we yeah. also using it not just for flavor, but because of the, the good bacteria that's in buttermilk? Absolutely. So um, fermented foods are great for gut health. Mm -hmm. um, it also maintains the uh, um, healthy bacteria in your gut. Um, and except for that, just, just really helps with balancing your body um, with regards to, um, as we are talking about today, detox, etc. Detoxing. Right. So let's get it all going. So do, can we go in with the liquid first? I would okay. say Buttermilk so. goes in. Mm -hmm. And again, if you don't have buttermilk at home, the process to make it is quite easy. Just get milk and add a little bit of lemon juice to it and let it just sit for a little bit and you'll see it start splitting. Mm -hmm. That's exactly how you get that, that, the fermenting process starting. Mm -hmm. Then I'm seeing, what, what have we got over here? So um, that could be cocoa, uh, or it could be something like a protein powder. Um, so what's interesting to me is, or something to keep in mind, is that the um, butter beans just give a very nice um, creamy consistency. In the you know um, old days, we would use frozen bananas. So this is replacing right. it. And depending on the protein you'd like to add, um, you could use things like cinnamon or cocoa to um, just enhance the flavor. Um, like I said, I think most people would find using butter beans or beans in a smoothie quite daunting. So, but the um, flavor's neutral. You're never going to mm -hmm. taste it and go, ooh, that tastes beany. No. So I like the fact <laughs> that you're using that instead of banana, because banana, mm. I feel like it's there for the texture. Right. But sometimes the flavor does come through quite a lot, and especially yes. for people who don't like the flavor of banana, the exactly. butter beans are a great alternative. Yep. I'm switching to beans. Yes. Purely because of the protein that's in them. Absolutely. So I, I love that. And it's frozen. I see the beans have slightly been frozen, yes. as well as the blueberries and the strawberries. Right. And I love that idea, because mm -hmm. instead of adding ice and diluting exactly. the flavor and the nutrients, yeah, yep. you're actually just freezing, and that'll be what cools down the smoothie. Absolutely. And what I sometimes do, especially if I know I'm going into a very busy week, is mm -hmm. I actually pre-pack my Ziplocs. Oh, so yeah. So you could put in your beans, your, um, your variations of your fruits, and literally just do the blitz and the adding. Um, so that's quite cool. The blitz and the adding. And this is, a, <laughs> this is more of the protein powder going in. Right. So, so the recipe asks for pea protein, mm -hmm. um, which is also, it has quite the pungent... Um, 
taste. And um, you could also, you know, replace that with something like uh, brown rice uh, protein powder or even collagen. If you're not opposed Which to... is quite people quite trendy yes. at the moment, but I mean yes. it also has its own benefits. Okay, I'm gonna yeah. make a little bit of noise. <laughs> that looks good. Especially the colour. The colour. I love it. I love it. I mean, it. there are some smoothies that look like Mm, not desirable, and, and like, you do eat with your eyes first. Yes. And it's almost weird, like if you're looking at one and it looks a bit off, you almost feel like that's probably gonna be such a healthy smoothie. Exactly. But this, oh, I still got some more chunks. Let me just do a very quick one. If there are any chunks in there now, we're just eating it. We're just eating yes, it? Okay. Like, uh... So this is gonna be a strange, it's gonna sound a bit obvious, but when people talk about wanting to detox. Mm -hmm. What is detoxing? What, what actually happens during that process? So basically, I always tell my patients that it's important to understand that your body has natural detox um, systems. Mm -hmm. So for instance, when you go on a detox, it usually works in um, a few manners. For instance, it can be that you're excluding normal um, toxins like which what we would usually find in foods, especially highly processed foods or takeaways. Um, so eliminating that for a while by placing focus on healthier, more natural things is already going to assist your body to detox. But when it comes to detox, um, there's not necessarily need to add much um, you know, extra ingredients, your body is geared to detox. So your liver, your kidneys, your skin, and um, even the air that you exhale helps, you know, it's your, yes, it's your body's daily process of detoxing. I love it, I love it. Okay, so we've got a voice note. Let's have a listen to what one of our viewers has to say. Good morning, Annika and Clem. I want to know, you said that you believe in breakfast and that breakfast is very important. Um, what is your opinion about fasting? Um, it's like as in fasting with the, the diet trains. Okay, so that's something that we also get a lot. Um, quite a fad at the moment is something called intermittent fasting. We also know though that for some religions, religious reasons we might want periods of fasting. Um, what I found in practice is that some people are better suited to fasting than others. When it comes to the medical evidence, mm -hmm. we do suggest a 16-8 fast. So you'd be fasting for 16 hours, and you have your eating uh, window of eight hours. So medically speaking, that's got the most, um, you know, scientific backing. Um, my concern is always um, just kind of how do you break the fast? Uh, some personalities and even genetic setups are um, sometimes more inclined to overeat mm -hmm. um, after periods of fasting. So it really does depend um, also with regards to medical conditions like diabetes or um, not that being pregnant is a condition, but during pregnancy it's also not advised. So, I mean, if it's, if it's part of your, you know, if it's gonna make your life easier, then by all means do it. Just make sure that you um, have, you know, healthy options when you do break the fast. Um, like this. Like this. There we go. Annika's not going anywhere. Annika, cheers. cheers. Let's have a taste of that. Mm. Ten years younger. Look at me. <laughs> look at look at these grey hairs disappearing. This is delicious, and the texture is absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. Annika's not going anywhere. Please get those voice notes through. The next thing we're going to answer and debunk all your questions about detoxing. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back with more culinary hotline bling. Ding, ding, ding. It's my feel good. Welcome back to the kitchen for another installment of the Culinary Hotline Bling! <laughs> Listen, a couple of you need to detox in the studio. You sound, that was sad. That was sad. It's a Culinary Hotline Bling! Ding, ding, ding! Better, Annika, please join me in the kitchen. Okay, so we've made one delicious smoothie. Right. Amazing. So I've still got some more left of mine. Now we're going to talk about some myths. Right. Some myths that people believe if they take this one thing, it cures every single health problem mm -hmm. that they have. Right. But that's why you're here today. So let's kick off straight away. But before we do, actually, wait, wait, wait. Before we do, South Africa, please send us your voice notes. This is your chance to debunk any detoxing myth that you might have. The magic number 063-408-8863. Send us your voice notes. 
So I've lined up a few ingredients that I believe people always go to and just call health. And they think right. it's going to seal everything. Let's start off over here. Green tea or matcha. Mm -hmm. It's kind of become such a health drink. Right. Rightfully or not so much? So in the realm of dietetics and treating individuals, um, we try and encourage variety. Um, so for instance, green tea um, may be quite beneficial with regards to antioxidants and polyphenols. These are the things our body could use in its normal detoxing processes daily. So by all means, if you want to start the day or um, with green tea or have it as a snack, um, it won't be bad for you, but having it in large amounts, expecting, you know, uh, some miracle also ne won't necessarily be worth it. So, again, include it into your diet, but don't make it your main focus. Right. Mm -hmm. And, of course, if we're adding full-fat milk and sugar to it, we kind of... Un we, I mean, what's it, we're undoing, right. we're still getting the antioxidants, but you kind of, it's, it's kind of taking, steering it away from... Absolutely. Okay, from yeah. being a healthier so, option, yeah. Yeah, so another... So, uh, or, instance is coffee. I absolutely love coffee and coffee's got quite a bad reputation um, but it's also filled with a lot of antioxidants. It's been proven to prevent things like um, mental decline. It can even help to a certain degree with constipation. So again it's just the things we add to it that really um, makes or breaks the beverage. All right I get mm -hmm. you. Next one, ginger. Right. And I'm talking specifically ginger. Maybe we can go ginger fresh and then obviously versus powdered. But ginger, mm -hmm. let's talk about the fresh ginger as it is right now. So I absolutely love ginger. It's very versatile. Um, and um, I mean, using it in its fresh um, form, it's always, you know, got a nice pungent um, you know, taste to it. It's um, recently been more in the spotlight with regards to um, COVID and the pandemic because it does have quite a bit of um, immune boosting properties. Um, so yeah, I sometimes use it just finely chopped in cold water or boiling water as a pick-me-up. Um, of course, we know when it comes to detox and supporting your body, the natural processes of detox that your body already has, water is, is of utmost importance. Right. So, so, you know, adding things like ginger or lemon may enhance the taste and even have certain benefits, but only to a limited degree. Got you. We're going to go off script right now. It's mentioned water. When it's recommended we have two litres of water a day. Right. Can that water be juice, tea, coffee? Can that form part of our two litres of the day? Or does it have to be out the tap or proper water water? Okay, so that's a very important question. Usually we say all fluids contribute to your total water intake if it is naturally caffeine and sugar-free. Okay. Okay. So, for instance, something like green tea does have quite large amounts of caffeine, so that's something to keep in mind, as does coffee. Um, unfortunately, we have also been seeing people having large amounts of energy drinks right. that do contain caffeine. So, the moment you have a drink that contains caffeine, you kind of have to make up for that. So, for instance, if we divide the two litres of water into, say, eight glasses, um, and you're having a cup of coffee, for every cup of coffee, you'd actually add a cup of water okay. to, to balance that out. So, caffeine can dehydrate you. Um, yeah. I like I'll that question. I like, I like the answer. We've got another voice note. Let's have a listen to what our viewers has to say. Good morning, Expresso team. It's Carol here. Um, would only having fruit uh, first thing in the morning for breakfast um, after coffee, um, would that constitute a detox um, and then a meal at, say, around about 11 o'clock in the morning? Thank you. Okay, so again, it's, it's, a, it's a loaded scenario. Mm. Um, like we said, I believe in breakfast, but I also believe in having a protein for breakfast, not to spike your insulin levels. So having fruit um, with coffee or without coffee, it, it, it's a very practical way of getting certain vitamins, certain types of fiber and electrolytes. Um, I do, however, think that one shouldn't think about a detox only as elimination, what to avoid, but also what you could add. Um, like we said, um, if you're having green tea, add some ginger, or if you are having 
cold water as part of your fluid intake for the day, add some lemon. Um, but yeah, it's not necessarily, it doesn't necessarily have a set criteria. Um, like I said, it's, it's avoiding the, the known nasties, you know, um, and also considering that sometimes these things that we need to detox from come from other sources than food. Can we say what the sources are? <laughs> what are those sources? So that would be things like smoking, uh -huh. cigarettes, all the alternatives we have these days. Also air pollutants. Um, it can even be, uh, you know, um, chemicals we use in the kitchen or garden. Um, so all of these things really burden our bodies with toxins. And we should rather use food to help your body detox mm. and avoiding harmless food in attempt to accelerate this Got detox. You. I don't know if that makes sense. No, it does make sense. And would stress form part of that factor that something you need to eliminate during your, your detox process? Well, yes. I think um, if anyone has the opportunity to slow down and... What? You, you, you know? Yeah. If you, if you are privileged enough to have that opportunity, please do that. Um, I don't necessarily think that a detox, you need... Um, to be stress-free to detox, but it certainly helps. And I mean, I've also kind of um, listened into some of the conversations this morning. And um, what I do think is detox is multifactorial and it's almost like you are looking at few aspects of your life, mm. trying to be more aware of your body um, and also in that way, improve your health. So, Got yeah. you. Bring in my friend, Carl Wasty, standing, this man, Talking about bodies, look at that sexy Ooh. body. Hi. Woo. Hi there. Woo. Hi. Hello. An Hi. honor. You've been amazing today. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to stand right over here. What are we tasting? I'm here. You know the great thing about having two fantastic friends slash colleagues that are intermittent fasting? Yeah. Is that I get to do intermittent eating. Nice. Lovely. That's it. Here we go. So, so here we go. What do we have first? Please taste our smoothie, and I'd like for you to guess what the magic ingredient is. Okay, And cool. while you're doing that, we, we've, we've just touched on lemon, but let's go, go through it again. Is lemon... Recommended as part of your detox. Look at Carl's face. You can. It's very okay. textural. Textural. It tastes like there's rice in here. Uh, it, um, close. It tastes like this. There's like a like a there's, there's something that's cob. There's a cob. There's a cob <laughs> in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can taste cobs. I'm gonna tell you, it's beans. That's what I knew. It is it's, a legume. Yeah, and you don't cob. taste beanie, right? You don't taste the beanie flavour. No, it's but the texture. texturally, I've got texture. that. But, but it's fine. I'm not a. I'm not a finicky by texture. I think if you're getting something in, yeah. you should just completely erase all textural thing and know that it's coming. That's Absolutely. Why, that's why I love mm. chia seeds as well, which yes. is like really good for the gut too. So, mm -hmm. mm. Oh, nice, nice. So, so Africa, do not go anywhere. Call. Enjoy that. You look. What's that one? Fifteen years younger. Have some some Can matcha. I have some of this as well? You Sorry, have some matcha tea while I'm eating. <laughs> While he's busy having his drinks, Africa don't go anywhere. We're going to chat more about lemons, beetroots, brown rice. Annika's not going anywhere, so stay tuned for more Culinary Hotline Bling! Ding, ding, ding! ding. ding. It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back, and we're in the kitchen, this time making what promises to be the most delicious, nutritious pasta dish. Annika, please come back into the kitchen and join us for another installment of the Culinary Hotline Bling! Ding, ding, ding! Now, just a reminder again, get those voice notes coming through to that magic number, 063-408-8863. Send us all your voice, voice notes. Annika's here to debunk any myths that you might believe surround the detox industry. Yeah, sure thing. Mm -hmm. um, Annika, this pasta looks like just, just healthy. I know, right? And we haven't put it together just yet. I know, it's so vibrant in colour. And I think that's something you should always measure your mm -hmm. food prep or even your meal by, is making sure you have at least three or four different colours. I was about to do mm -hmm. what I normally do and just like empty olive oil into the pan. Okay. But I'm with the dietitian, so I feel like, <laughs> is there a recommended like... <laughs> Right. Still, yeah. I yeah. mean, uh, uh, olive oil, one thing, yeah. it's also got health properties. It, it absolutely does. But in yes. moderation, right? Right. So, um, I always say if you want to use olive oil, mm. make sure it's a good quality and that you don't heat it for extended periods of time. So, when we look at a portion of fat or oil, like you mentioned, a teaspoon of olive a oil teaspoon? Okay. would be allowed for a person. So, then that, okay, so we're making this for like four or six people, so you can yep. work that out and yes. do the math. Okay, yep. but onions are going into the pan. Great. Okay, let's start cooking that. Let's talk about yes. some of the other ingredients. Right. So, uh, like I mentioned, the more colours, the better. Mm -hmm. um, the fresh herbs are amazing. Um, the... Um, 
Celery. Celery, thank you. They are quite high in um, potassium and water. And again, those are the things that you want to give your body, especially when you're trying to just improve your health in general. Um, so they're great. They've also got a very nice texture um, and ability to bulk up meals. Right. So. I've got a thing about celery. Um, there's a hack that I found out. Yes. It's quite fibrous, which right. is a good thing. Yes, but if is. you don't like the fibres, you just cut all the way down, like almost all the way yeah. through. And then you pull. Okay. And it pulls off the fibres. That's right. the fibre bit that you always end up chewing on. Yeah. So that's a great hack if you don't like right. the fibres. How would you like your... Are we, are we cooking it or are we keeping it raw? Uh, so, no, you can definitely sauté it with okay. the onions. Um, so, you should also put me to work, but... Um, Let's talk I'm about... <laughs> actually, yes, I'm going to put you to work with the mushrooms. I can mix. <laughs> Tell me about the mushrooms. Um, right. One thing about mushrooms is people don't like the skins on them. Right. I love the skins. Mm -hmm. um, is there nutritional benefits in keeping the skins on? Absolutely. So, mushrooms are so versatile, especially when you are... Um, cooking without animal proteins. Um, okay. It's got a very good texture. And it's got about uh, two to four grams of fiber per 100 grams of uh, mushroom. So generally, okay, yeah, the, generally our South African public, we don't take in enough fiber. Um, and of course, we know that sufficient amount of fiber with sufficient amount of uh, fluids. Um, is what is needed for good quality uh, excretion, if you know what I'm... Got you. Sorry. Yes, I do get you. So <laughs> we've, get, we've got fibre in our mushrooms. Right. We've got fibre and protein coming from our lentils yes. as well. Yeah. And lentils, I absolutely love. I feel like we just don't use it enough. Absolutely. So we spoke about the protein. Are you? Could you, mm -hmm. in a sense, if you're going flexitarian, yes. get the same amount of protein out of lentils yeah. that you would out of meat? So, with all your prawn uh, proteins, you want to combine certain ones to make a balanced and um, complete amino acid mm -hmm. profile. Okay. So, if I could or just maybe say, for instance, a piece of chicken or um, steak, it has a specific amino acid profile that makes the protein what it is. So, with plant-based uh, proteins, you kind of need to combine some of the um, protein. So, for instance, brown bread with peanut butter would give you a complete uh, protein profile. Um, or when okay. we do rice and lentils, same goes. However... That's so interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So, I mean, to, to make it all balanced, then we should be... I mean, our moms and aunts used to do, like, the lentils and the rice mix. Yes. That wasn't just for... Well, then for flavour, they, they were onto something. Absolutely. Okay. And I think it's great that we're moving back to those, you know, more um, old, well, old practices that were just less um, processed. Moms, were, I feel like, were the original dietitians. They, yeah. they were in charge <laughs> of, like, making sure everybody's growing up big and strong. So Absolutely. I totally trust the moms. I'm going to ask for some salt. And then while someone's bringing me some salt, I'm going to ask a question. Right. Brown rice versus white rice. And we know we're not doing it now, but there's a question that I have. Is brown rice the healthier option? Should we always be substituting white rice with brown rice? So, I wouldn't say it's always necessary. I mean, brown rice has some extra flavours in them. Of course, naturally, they are high in fibre. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, like we said, there are many ways in boosting the fibre content of a meal. Um, so, I mean, brown rice is also quite expensive. It is, um, and we've noticed that. And I was wondering, is that because of the health fad? that people are saying brown rice is a healthier option? Or is brown rice just a little more expensive to produce? I don't know. No, so as far as I understand, um, I mean, we, once they harvest the rice, it goes through a process of becoming white rice. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they yeah, de yeah. etc. et cetera. So um, brown rice is less processed, but like, I'm, like I mentioned, it's, it's quite expensive and you don't really need it. So for instance, if we were to use this bolognese um, on something like rice mm -hmm. instead of pasta, normal r white rice in the you know portion sizes recommended for your body would be absolutely fine. Okay. Um, yeah. I get you. Okay, so they haven't brought my salt just yet. Lucian! Lucian! Gonna bring salt, but we've got um, stock going in, and you can also mm -hmm. use veggie stock or pro or um, chicken stock, I suppose. But if you're keeping yes. it veggie, veggie yes, stock, absolutely. So my question about um, this, I was going to ask you a question about back again to rice, mm -hmm. cooking 
rice in stock. Right. Are we actually getting the protein from the stock if we do cook our rice in the stock, or is it purely just for flavour? Um, I wouldn't say that you would get protein in sufficient amounts. It's definitely the flavour, and what you should remember is that flavour is actually retained in fat. Okay. Yeah. 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 So with regards to using, say, a, a chicken or beef stock or even a you know seafood stock, it's more for taste. Okay. Yeah. You know what? We spoke so much about the mushrooms. I've got to add it. <laughs> so we're going to just do that anyway. And then I see we've got some basil here and a little bit of Parmesan cheese. Right. And I like the fact that you said it's not excluding, ex excluding foods. It's mm -hmm. also about adding things. We've Absolutely. added a lot, of, a, a lot of ingredients to this dish. And it, it, again, it's, I know I'm being cliche, but it actually looks and feels healthy, exactly. which I absolutely love. And flavoursome. Yes. Healthy doesn't always mean it's boring food. So this absolutely. is absolutely delicious. Right. Mushrooms going in and I just right. break them. I'll help. To the people that are like, I come in here, Lucian, my friend. And when you do the oyster salad, it means thank you, <laughs> Lucia. Thank you for the salt. So, uh, mushrooms. If you are someone at home who doesn't like the skin on the mushrooms, very simple to remove, especially with the bigger mushrooms, with the brown mushrooms. All you got to do is literally just get your get grab the skin at the bottom and just peel it off. Mm -hmm. That's all you have to do. But honestly, just keep the skins on. Honest, I, I love it. I love the texture. Also keeps the mushroom together. It's also quite, you know, I mean. It's worth mentioning that this skin, mm -hmm. it's brown, right? Right. So, I mean, that's also why you would buy certain uh, uh, varieties of mushroom. So whenever you see different colours in nature, it means it has different nutritional value, especially with, with regards to antioxidants. So, I got you. you know, the, the brown skin is actually giving you better uh, bang for buck, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, but if, if it's the deal breaker, take off the skin and just have the, the mushroom anyway. Got you. This is going to simmer down. We're going to add our basil, add our cheese to it, toss it to the pasta. That's dinner done. It looks yeah. amazing. Smells so good. Annika, you've been amazing. And also, just to mention, a lot of my questions weren't even on Annika's script today. Annika was hitting them. You were so amazing. Thanks. We're keeping you on speed dial because I feel like we're going to need you in the kitchen a lot. Thank you so much for You're being welcome. here this morning. Thanks for having me. We'll be back again next week with more Culinary Hotline Bling! Yeah. 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 Yeah.